The first question has to be, of course, you have been waiting a very long time to represent Austria and to go to Rotterdam. And this wait is almost over. So how are you feeling now that I think you're going to Rotterdam in a couple of weeks time? That's very true. Yeah, um, I feel very excited. Um, can't wait uh, for this whole tension to be actually re almost released on the on stage. And I honestly, honestly feel like, yeah, it's about time because, you know, just 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 waiting and, and, and being, um, you know, with anticipation, it's it's actually almost like a torture. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I really do enjoy this time right now. Is it like anything like the build up makes you more nervous, but once you're there, you'll you'll probably kind of get swept up in everything and you'll uh, you know, you'll forget how nervous you were. Actually, I, it's always the same. Yeah, the preparation is always is, is always kind of linked with a little bit of anxiety, you know, but um, it's the same when when when, you know, boxers go and uh, um, uh, prepare for a fight. I think it's the same with uh, with with us singers because this is not just a normal gig. It's it's a contest, and uh, you know, no one wants to be last. You know, so but that's gonna happen somehow uh, with anyone. And um, I just I just feel like everyone has this tension, but at the same time, I think we shouldn't forget. No one of all these artists, beautiful artists, should forget that this is a beautiful historical ride. That you know, it's very special representing austria and yeah. Aust austria having won the contest very recently in the last decade yeah. does that mm -hmm, add more mm -hmm. pressure not really i think i think it's just um i'm a different artist uh it's the, it's a different it's a it's a different time and at the same time i know you know um pressure is up uh it's just it's just i'm just gonna do my very very best and um i think um that's that's all we, we have to focus on, you know, to just be really focused and not to look to the left and to the right. You just run your own race. Now, you potentially have a great advantage in preparing for Eurovision because you, of course, have a history of um, performing on live television programs in Austria and, you know, music competitions yourself. You know, I yeah, think that that yeah. was that was kind of how you came to prominence in Austria in the first place. Yes, totally. And I, I thought I thought I would actually, in my age, uh, <laughs> I thought that I would not um, participate in any contest anymore because I was like, nah, I'm well, way too old for this. But, um, you know, to 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 be representing Austria, like in, in, in that sort of um, sphere uh, in the Eurovision Song Contest in an his historical event like this and gotten chosen two times from the television broadcaster ORF, it means just so much to me. It, this is this is so special. So it, it, it feel it, I, I do feel the pressure. But at the same time, I just as I said, I really want to enjoy the ride. And um, yeah, slow breaths and <laughs> just actually do enjoy a lot of uh, the other contestants music. So I, I really like it. I really love it. Have you managed to listen to to some of the other songs competing this year? Some some of those, but not every every song. Um, but I think every every artist has the same thing that, um, of course, uh, they want to just focus on themselves, and it, it just it takes so much energy and focus, and um, especially me as being a father and uh, also I run my own business. You know, it's just everything that happens right now right here right now you can imagine how much that is so uh just going with the flow from day to day so yeah how have you got time to be a dad a musician preparing for the eurovision song contest as you said there run your own business you're talking to me now from your gym room how are you finding time to do all of these different things i think as you say like time you know time is the most important thing right now and it's also i i I really don't want to waste any because, um, you know, Corona, all of that time that we actually also don't have with our special people, like our parents sometimes, you know, you can't see them as often anymore as back then. And um, always with, with all of these restrictions, I really cherish time. I really value time. So um, I don't have any time to, for, for people that, 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 really just wasted or 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 suck on my energy so i 
yeah, I, I really value people and the people that I give my time with. So it's, it's your time right now with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you. It's great to have you. Yeah. Now, now I want to talk about your 2021 song in just a little while. But but first, I wanted to talk about your own past with the Eurovision Song Contest, because before we talk about 2017, when, of course, you got to go to Kiev with Nathan Trent, the year before that, I think I'm right in saying that you attempted to represent Austria. Yeah, yes. Um, uh, you mean you mean with uh, all we need is that love? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the time when when Zoe went for us, and um, exactly, it's you know all of these all of these songs uh, that has were created. They, you know, it's it's so it would be so cool if 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 people would just see actually the the, the actual thing that goes goes on behind the scenes because there's so many factors in just you know just answering yeah this song happened because this and this but of course i won't go to any details um it's just in that particular time uh i think that was the vibe that was expected of me so if you if you ask me if if, if i if i would come up with a vibe like that again uh, i i think not not probably <laughs> as soon as as soon as that but but um i i really appreciated my my, my song alive a lot actually um it, it 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 was it was very funky i actually had that these chord progressions that 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 i really appreciate very much too yeah and I think I'm right in saying that in 2016, with your song that year, you had to enter the stage on a hoverboard, which sounds incredibly nerve wracking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. It was totally, it, you know, um, this whole idea. Uh, all we need is that love, the staging and everything. It was so, oh, man, it was very actually very stressful because we, we tried to um, combine so many things that we were inspired uh, about you know and we were like hey we could do this we could do that and i was as crazy still i think this that one was one of the last backflips i ever did on stage i mean that just that were just reveals of what a person i am i just want to give it my 150 percent and um I mean, when I think about it, if I look at it, it, it looks like a like a circus moment. <laughs> <laughs> it it was cool though. Come on, w w w what artist was, would would be like that street? You know, to say, hey, I'm I'm, I'm gonna just um, be thrown from two very very strong guys and almost risk my life on that because because that that performance could have been turned up very 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 dangerous, like very different. Yeah, I would I would so, recommend people check I, it I, I, I'd recommend people check it out because it's it's like you said, there's a lot going on. Plus plus the the, the hoverboard was somewhere over in the front and 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 this and the and the and the floor is very slippery, man. I was I don't know why I had to you know, I think this is that's the Asian in me. I just wanna be, you know, karate karate <laughs> karate tiger on the <laughs> on stage. <laughs> now, the yeah. the next year you you put the hover, hoverboard away and you got to go to Eurovision of course you got to go to Kiev you were part of the the act with Nathan Trent you were one of his his backing singers what was that whole experience like because we've heard many stories about what the Eurovision Song Contest in Kiev in 2017 was like you know it was a bit haphazard it was a little bit disorganized but from your perspective you know was it very enjoyable mm, let's say it like this I think alone that that the people really every every country that that uh, has the turn to organize Eurovision I think it's just troubleshooting from day one to day whatever you know it's it's just just making it happen everybody just want to make it happen I feel like uh, we were taken care of very good um, all of our um, all the people that were uh, in charge for us, they, they were very sweet. Uh, I just remember having a good time with Nathan uh, and, and, and uh, the other background singers. Um, we just had a blast, you know, and I saw how actually stressful it is, you know, um, to just be all over the place and, and sing and talk the whole day and then be expected to have a beautiful and, 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 and healthy voice at the main event you know it's it's actually almost uh nerve-wracking to think that that um that's the whole 
you know that's the whole trip and the whole bubble of, of, of Eurovision but I feel that's the way it is and that's the hype and that's the spirit so um, I really actually do appreciate that this time it's 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 a uh, lesser of a of a hype but still we're we're all excited and yeah I I appreciate that we can talk um, I don't have to fly into to <laughs> where where are we? Where where are you actually from? London, I, I London. To, from London. Yeah. I, I mean, I would love to go to London. <laughs> I would have loved to to be face to face to you. But thank 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 God for for good uh, technology, man. For real. Definitely, definitely. I just wanted to ask you about about mm -hmm. Nathan. You know, is Nathan still a guy who you are able to talk to? Are you friends with Nathan? Um, I can consider him to as being one of my very good friends. Um, um, we don't hear us often anymore. Um, we don't hear each other as often anymore. But um, when it comes to real life situations, I th I think I can just text him, "Hey, bro, I need you right here and right now." Because you know, I think that's that's I I, can, I think I can count on him. Count on him. But uh, everyone is just busy with their own race, and you know, I think he is one of those artists here in Austria that really. He's one of the hardest workers I've I've known ever since, and he works hard on his craft. He's he's a good singer. He's he's one of the best singers that I know, and yeah, uh, appreciate his art. You know, I think one thing that us fans of the contest can never comprehend is that moment when you realize you know it's go time. the The lights come up and you are performing on stage at the Eurovision Song Contest. That is the advantage that you have over a lot of the artists this year. You know, you have already had that moment, not as the main artist, but on that stage. So what was that like for you? Mm. Um, I think, honestly, it didn't really feel as different uh, as a... I think the mind is, is sort of um, going into a sphere that says, this is just a normal gig. And that is good like that, because if you would think so much about how many millions of people I cannot, I cannot even imagine or fathom how it looks like, like how, how would it look like in my mind, millions of people, I cannot even picture that. So it's just like, you're just doing your job. This is what you're born for. So just go for it. That's, that's the attitude I think we should have all have as artists and and this is it. This is one of the best moments in your life. I think that's you should you should think that. Yeah. You said earlier on in the yeah. interview that you have been lucky enough to be selected to represent Austria twice, you know, 2020 and 2021. How did 2020 come about, first of all? Well, uh, we were um, a small group of uh, musicians and singer songwriters and producers uh in the panel in the in internal um selection and i must admit i thought i wouldn't make it because there was one singer that you know that i really highly respect to and i cannot mention his name but this is a guy who is always booked you know he's always booked here in here in austria he's he's just loved by everyone you know and i was like okay it's gonna be him it's gonna be him and then um Eberhard Vorhag calls me and kind of like tried to try to um sell it as if it wasn't me and <laughs> he said he said oh Vince I have to give you the the bad news first I was like okay just tell me man just tell me all right just tell me and he said uh bad news is you're gonna have a lot of work and good news is it's you I was like you're, you're kidding me you're kidding me. So I was dying on that day. I was sobbing. I was really, I was, I was crying a lot. Yeah. Now, fast yeah. forward, fast forward to 2021, because, you know, we've seen that some countries haven't sent their 2020 artists to Eurovision, but you thankfully are going again this year. What was it like when you realized, you know, I am going to get my chance again, because that must have been a bit nervy as well. Um, yeah, I thought, you know, since, since this whole Corona thing just doesn't seem to end, you know, I, I felt like, okay, how about my, uh, all my other gigs and all of the other plans that I had, you know, you can't plan nowadays. So it just so happened that everything just fell into place perfectly somehow. And I, 
I, I'm so thankful. I'm really thankful. And gratitude is, 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 my, is my word because, man, honestly, they didn't have to do this. So again, shout outs to ORF and all of you guys. I love you. Thank you so much for your trust. And here I am. We'll, I will make the best in a few weeks. Now, your song for 2021, of course, is, you know, Amen. Very, very different to your song in 2020. Was that a, a deliberate change for you? You know, did you want to send something very, very different this year than what was planned the year before? I think I think we, we hadn't had a plan at all. I think the most, uh, the, the most honest uh, answer I can give you is that it just it just so happened that even from my from my library of songs that I have, I mean, you know, we always write, we always produce. So all of the songs that I submitted weren't quite the vibe that we were searching for for this year. And I have to admit, it was I would have loved to, to get one of my songs. But then Amen came about and it was sent to us. And I, at the first I was like, sheesh, this is such a such a dramatic song but then as i listened to it even more i was like no i think this song has to be the vibe because because it's even it's even such a how is how you say it? it's such a such an awesome op opportunity to really think about people that lost other people you know what i mean and i think it just gives people more the chance to um to relate to something they can they could relate to especially for the last few years. And at first we didn't want to have any song that relates to Corona. And it's actually not a song about that, but you can of course relate to it because it's about separation. It's about grief. It's about a loss and acceptance and letting go. So I was like, okay, a sort of, okay, not, not my message, but the message that needs to be heard. So, yeah. And I love the song. It's written by, by uh, a, a group of people, super talented, unified songs, Pele Loriano, uh, Ashley Hicklin, uh, Jonas Stander, Nikolai Tribolek, and um, Tobias Karshi. Man, I know them for, uh, names already, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I learned the names, but these, these, these guys are super cool. Well done that you did. Well done for not forgetting anyone. Well done for remembering everybody. Come on, come on. <laughs> and also shout outs to, you know, shout outs to uh, uh, Team Lancelot because they are, they killed the video, I think. I really, they killed the video. I was chatting to uh, Tusa from Sweden a couple of weeks ago. And I said to him that his song, Voices, of course, stands out this year because there are a lot of up-tempo songs this year. There's a lot of kind of 80s sounding vibes, which of course is very current in the music industry right now. Do you think that gives you a good chance that your song isn't one of those? And it is a, it's a very powerful ballad. And as you've said there, it, it will stand out. Honestly, I, I don't even go there with my mind. I don't, I don't even go, uh, what could be, what should be, or, or so I just, I just really, really want to focus on the emotion that I want to, uh, contaminate the people with, which is, first of all, empathy for everything that has been happening uh, um, in, in the world. And, you know, everything else, it's just, there is never a golden rule. It's your vision, you know, it has its own spirit. It has its own timing and, and, and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's all the best that we can do, you know. Now you are, when you get to Rotterdam in a, in a very short amount of time, which is very exciting, you're going to have to spend a lot of time in your hotel room, which we already know. Now we've spoken to loads of artists about this. Albina from Croatia said she's going to eat loads of ice cream in her room. Blind Channel from Finland said they're going to write an album when they're over in Rotterdam. Uh, Barbara from France said she's going to read lots of books. Tusa's doing his homework. What are you going to be doing? Honestly, um, Roman, who's actually also in the, in the, in the chat right now, he, <laughs> we're going, we're going to work out because he's gonna, he's gonna, um, bring his, his dumbbells that you can fill with water, you know, but honestly, I'm not just going to be that, that good of a guy. I, of course, also, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, um, you know, I'm gonna sh ship a little bit of my, my equipment with me and 
yes, the best time to create music is the best time. I love I love, I love hotel rooms at all, uh, always because it's such it's not your own home. You don't have to clean up all the time because somebody can clean up for you. <laughs> and um, at the end of the day, I think it's just such a good vibe because uh, one of my my best friends, actually a good artist, a new artist that I that I produce myself uh, is coming with me as my assistant and. I'm also gonna write a, a little bit for him. We're gonna write for each other, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast. And then maybe one day he can go to Eurovision, and you can support him. Maybe. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Vincent, I know I've only got time for a couple more questions. Uh, firstly, I just wanted to ask how important it is for you to be able to represent the Filipino community on stage, because you are gonna get a huge sway of support from the other side of the world, which must mean so much to you. Well, I, I honestly, that, that, that is something that I try to really carry in my heart very much because, you know, as a, as an Austrian that has Filipino roots, I always felt kind of like an anomaly all over the world, wherever I am, I never felt too Austrian enough. And in the Philippines, I never felt too Filipino enough. And, you know, it's just, I'm just, I'm just really really used to working hard a lot and that is what filipinos are all about you know um filipinos have that character of really working super hard and being super polite and stuff like that but at the end of the day uh it's important for me not not just to represent the filipinos too but all the asians because man you're you you know what's been going on you know and i don't want to be too too vocal about it but I think I have to speak up as one of those uh, Asians uh, representative that it's 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 uh, it's obvious that the world has a problem right now not just with Asians but with humanity itself and I feel I feel that um, being an Asian being being a Filipino it's super important to uh, raise the flag inside of your heart you know so yeah it's it's important for me to speak up for that and for my community of course of course of course uh, my final question is just what would you like to say yeah. to the people listening to this who can of course pick up the phone they can vote for you in the app they can vote for you in the semi-final to get you through to the grand final what would you like to say to them well uh all of the people that are listening right now thank you so so much for your time and for your energy and that you um yeah that you support me. Um, I really, really appreciate you. And um, thank you for all of the all of the love and every single like uh, comment or, um, you know, reaction, you know, we live off of your guys's energy, actually. And um, thank you for the votes and uh, for believing in me and my music and um, for this whole, whole this whole journey. I'm just super grateful for you guys. Thank you so much.